Tim Wagner here, RTC TV4, with Jeff Shriver and June Hazel. Yazel. Yazel. I'll pay for that. Um, so I hope they can tell us a little bit about what's going on here at Frontier Days. Uh, I'm going to let Jeff take over here for a second. Well, I'll tell you, we have a, a class uh, called American Studies, and the American Studies class is a class that is a project-based uh, history class where we combine U.S. history and English in two periods a day. Okay. Uh, some of the kids are earning some college credit through Grace College in this class. So it's practical it is, also. It is exactly practical. And that's one of the, the things that, that uh, we really try to explain up front to kids as they sign up for the class is you're going to read about history, you're going to write about history. We're going to use uh, English skills to, to learn the, the history content. And so that's what we do in the class. And, and one of the big uh, projects, kind of the, the uh, maybe culminating project of the year is uh, Prill School Day where our kids uh, learn about uh, that time period of the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then pass some of that knowledge on to our fourth graders that study Indiana history in that state curriculum. And so, so this is Prill School Day is actually what this that, is. That's what we, we call in our project Prill School Day, uh, Frontier Day, Prill School Day, whatever you want to call it. But we, it's centered around Prill School. So in the morning, uh, we come out here to Akron, and, and on Monday we go to Mentone, and we have these projects and crafts here. And then we'll go to Prill School with the, the students in the afternoon they'll tour the school and we'll have some more activities out there so it's just a neat opportunity what else have you had what do you have to add oh, sorry <laughs> well what the kids do is uh, they research the type of craft or activity that they're going to do with the kids they have to assemble all the materials we have some things in stock but they have to make sure they have everything prepared um, they have to come up with a speech what they're going to tell the kids about their project um, and then present it the day of so um, they, they get a lot of history in there, but also language arts and the presenting and the research. Well, it's kind of a big deal because they can get college credit out of this. Uh, is that for those kids get the, yeah. are we talking about? Yeah, uh, Grace College uh, offers a, a, a dual credit uh, through our school, and this is part of that. So um, not every kid in the class is, is, do, is taking the class for dual credit, uh, but a significant number are. And uh, we use the, the uh, Grace curriculum and, and textbook. And so, um, you know, uh, really we use uh, a lot of uh, um, research uh, throughout the, the course of, of the, the semester, not just on this project, but uh, internet research, the college textbook, and uh, high school textbooks, uh, primary sources to learn about history. So like everything, it's on the internet. It's, everything is on the internet. Apparently this stuff is too. <laughs> we use some some internet resources, yes, because yeah. that's what they're used to. But yes, we also use some of our textbooks and uh, yeah. You know, and the, and the skill there is uh, to to really disseminate what is a, a valid, uh, <laughs> accurate source, and that's a skill for the 21st century that our kids need. Yeah. So when they look at the when they look at the internet, uh, is this or is this not? really a fact course. is it a fact or is it what somebody got on a blog and and uh, that's one of the things that at the beginning of the class you really see growth in our kids as they they look at things on the internet and they kind of decide oh wait hey that's not factual um, and, and that's one of the skills that we try to teach okay. well thank you very much for doing what you do uh, we are having a blast today here these kids are awesome um, and thank you for letting us come out we appreciate it Hey, thanks for uh, put, putting this out there. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Today we're making ice cream in this churn. churn thing that's not churning. Okay, um, I guess some history on ice cream. Um, they were in war at the time, so they used ice cream to convince people to fight the war um, because it was kind of a uncommon thing. It was only for the rich people. It wasn't for the poor, so... It was very, it was used for um, bribery, I guess. It was kind of like their money. Okay, so back in the pioneer times, the, um, you weren't allowed to eat ice cream on Sundays, so they invented the dish called Sunday, so they were able to eat it to substitute for not eating on Sunday. And basically, we're just showing the kids um, a, a way of how the pioneers did it. We didn't use plastic bags back in the Pioneer Day, but we're showing them the concept of not being able to buy store-bought ice cream. So I think this is just a fun way of showing them that they also had a good treat back then. 
rather than us just going to the store and buying it. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're just shaking the ice cream so it can, with the rock salt in there, so it can um, form the ice cream and get a little bit more solid for them <laughs> to eat. So, just shaking it, shaking it, shaking it. Back in the day when they used to make ice cream, it was only really for rich people. So they used to, obviously they didn't make them in plastic bags, but I think everybody's already said everything by my turn. <laughs> all right, we're, we're here at Pioneer Day at Akron Elementary. Uh, we're all very excited to be here. And uh, we're going to give you the down low on how to make some apple butter. All right, first thing we're going to do is put an apple on this here apple peeler. And he's just going to peel that. There we go. Would you look at that shine? <laughs> that shine! Like shine! And just like that. Throw in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> And a little bit about apple butter is everybody believes kind of that it came from German immigrants and we're all happy about it because it tastes pretty good. Part of the reason why people uh, made so much apple butter back in the day was because they didn't really have a great way of making bread taste good or they didn't have a good way to cook it. So putting apple butter on the bread really just made it taste decent so they could consume it. and. What they did with the leftovers was just give it to all the animals uh, because nobody likes to eat just straight apple peels. So there you go. That's pretty much the history of apple butter. There's apple a piece butter. of bread yeah, right there. This project right there. Pretty sweet, pretty tasty. Nice, sweet. It's about a 12 hour process to make apple butter. So it wasn't super time efficient, but it was really efficient as far as costs go. They pretty much had an unlimited supply of apples and all the spices that they needed. So. That's the history of apple butter. So basically what we're doing is back in the day, um, they didn't really have like, they didn't have chains, they didn't have machines to make the rope, like they didn't have people doing it. So what we're trying to teach them how to do today is do it by themselves because back, back then you didn't, when they didn't have, if they didn't have rope, you couldn't move your animals, you couldn't move the horses, the whole nine yards. And uh, we're using baling twine, and we're going to make rope with... Uh... These boards, you hook, hold the, you hook up the twine to the spindle, then you spin it around, and you tighten it, then you start making rope. This is quilt pen writing. It was used in the 6th through 12th, 19th century. They would use bigger birds like turkey, goose, swan, eagles, owls to like do the feathers because they created like the best tip for the quills. Um, they're still used by the U.S. Supreme Court today. If anyone wrote with their left hand, they were forced to use their right hand because their left hand would get the ink in it when they put their arm over top of their paper. So like when they were little, like starting to learn how to write, they would make all of them use their right hand instead. Um, a lot of important documents were always written with quill pens and even now, nowadays they still write them with ink and quill pens, but now they have more metal tips for them. And so this is just a fun little way to show them what it would be like growing up in pioneer days as children in, in that time to have to write with the ink and the quill. And it's fun to kind of see them make a little mess out of it and just to have them have that little feel of an older time. And I just think it's a very great experience for them to have throughout this entire pioneer day. Uh, happy Mother's Day message there. No, they look good. From other group, they just start Are you guys fourth or fifth grade? Okay, so we're making candles um, like they used to in the pioneer days. So um, the kids are walking around in a circle back here and um, they're dipping 
their a string in wax and then they're dipping it in water to cool the wax and it, it just builds up and makes candles. And then once they're done rotating in the circle, we're cutting it off at the top and they're rolling it in their hands to form it into a straight candle that they can burn at their house. Well, today we're talking about the history of funnel cakes. We had to explain to the children that they were originally created in 1879 in Germany and the Pennsylvania Dutch brought them over here. When they first started to make them, they were basically made out of just flour, eggs, water, just simple stuff and they're pretty popular in fairs because they're easy to make and they're easy to be stored. Um, my job with the funnel cakes is to just flip them. We, we, every single one of us here has a job to do with the funnel cakes, which is about somewhat similar that they did back then in the day. So we're just trying to replicate to the kids what, we, what the pioneers did back when they first settled into the country from Germany. So basically, apple bobbing takes place around um, Halloween. It was like a tradition back then. And now, um, we do it as like a fun game, I guess. And in, Scot in Scotland, they used to call it duking or apple ducking, I guess. So that's the tradition of apple bobbing. All right, now we're going to separate into two teams, and we're going to start by that pole. And you guys are going to race to see which team can get the apples the fastest. This is truly madness. Off the races they go. Looks like the girls' team's off to an early lead here. This is a much closer contest. You had to think that was going to happen. Girls are just running away with this one. Grab a stem. Okay, with a little assist there, uh, boys finally got one on the board. Here we go, here we go. Boys bring their A game. Water's pretty warm, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't think so. You got it. He didn't need a stem at all. Here we go. He's got a great run. There was a slide on that one. Just get in there. Yeah, good job. And the girls rack up another one. At least one of the apples is almost gone. See, he's using a good strategy here. You hog the whole bucket. That way no one can no one else can bob. Get a stem. Get a stem. Yeah. This is a serious competition. Just headbutt him out of the way. I'm kidding, please don't do that. That is a good strategy. I'm gonna try that in the future and all those fruit bobbing competitions I'm in. All right, well, uh, the, <laughs> the girls walked away with that one and we have a blind contestant. Okay, all right. We're, they're gonna see it through. Try the stem. That's what I, the piece of advice I've been hearing the whole time. It's worked once. <laughs> Okay, so what we're doing at this station is we're going to have some people take the pails of water and they're going to go fill it up at the pump and then they're going to bring them back over here. We're going to then fill up this tub of water, have some people, we have clothes that need washed, dirty from all the 
days at the farm, I guess. And then we're gonna have some people take the soap and they're gonna wash the soap on the, wa on the washboard, okay? So then once it's time to clean, so when, you, when it's time to clean the clothes, you have someone stand here, hold the washboard and hold the clothes, and then get all of the state. You just rub the clothes until you think they're clean and you just repeat the process for all the clothes. So that's, that's what's going on. So, and then once we're done washing them, we'll wring them out, we'll show you how to do that, and then we're gonna go hang them up on the line. I'm here at Pearl School and we're playing a game called Birdie in My Cup and it's where all the kids are going to stand in a circle and we're going to have a kid in the middle and they're going to have a colored bandana and the person in the middle is going to close their eyes while all the kids pass it around their backs and we're going to say stop and whoever has it behind their back, everyone's going to have their hands behind their back so the person in the middle won't know who has it and they're going to go around and ask, do you have my birdie? And if they say no, well, how do I say it? They say no. They say no. Yeah, if they say no, then we have to like dip our fingers in the bucket and splash them with a little bit of water and... <laughs> which is going to be kind of interesting because I feel like everyone's going to be soaking wet by the time this is over. But that's basically the game. All right. Uh, the first game we played was chain tag, and it's where there was two people that were it. And once they tagged someone, they chained their arms together like this, and then we just ran and tried to get everybody that we could. Yeah. yeah, okay, so the next game doesn't really have a name, but we call it Hoops and Sticks. And it's where uh, you have the hoop and you... <laughs> You take the stick like this and you fling your arms open and it will go flying and the person on the other side of you has to catch it with their sticks and they'll do it back. So we just keep going back and forth and that's really the game. What if you don't catch it? What if you don't catch it? If you don't catch it then you just pick it up off the ground and try to return it as best as you can to the other person. We're making bracelets and necklaces. Some are keeping it for themselves, for their own jewelry, and then some are making it, she's making it for her mom for Mother's Day. That's how they would make their money. They would trade their bracelets or necklaces or any kind of jewelry that they made for money. Yeah, they used to use these bracelets. Yeah, to confiscate for jewelry since it was hard to get back then.
Hi, this is Roy Vandermark. I'm part of the board here at uh, Prill School. Um, I hope you appreciate what you've seen today. Um, I think it's very important for the Akron and the Mentone fourth graders and the students at Tippecanoe New Valley to be a part of uh, Pioneer Days. Um, Fulton County is very blessed on having uh, a one-room schoolhouse. There's not many of these left in the country and Fulton County is very blessed to have one. Um, we are uh, always looking for some money and so if you can help uh, to see this continue, um, if you can uh, donate to the uh, Fulton County Community Found um, Foundation, it is uh, tax, um, tax deductible. Uh, that would be much appreciated and the uh, address will be at the bottom of your screen after the program. Thank you.